Witnesses say they saw a car come from this road, cross this street, and ram right into that building. A Milltown man was found dead after a small fire in this Newport business complex. Renovations are in full swing here at Pilgrim High School and at Warwick Veterans. We got an inside look at their progress. A couple animals dead and a few people hospitalized after a fire that started here earlier this morning. These wind turbines will soon become part of the nation's first offshore wind farm. For some teachers, this is a particularly difficult day as they've been teaching in the same room for 25 years. The Department of Licensing is giving the restaurant a 60-day trial period. In Providence, I'm Kate Wilkinson, Eyewitness News. The owner doesn't know who threw paint at his restaurant, but he's asking the public for help. He's offering a $2,000 reward in hopes that anybody would know what is going on. I don't want anybody doing this to anyone else. Uh, it's not fair to my family here, my customers, my help. The vandal showed up to Tommy's Clam Shack last Friday night in a white Halloween mask and a wig. Video footage shows the vandal tossing paint at the shack and driving off in the car down the street. Restaurant owner Thomas Patrick says the staff was shocked when they saw the clam shack the next morning. We feel really uh, upset about that somebody would come do this vandalism over here. Thomas has had the clam shack for four years and a seafood market next door for 40. He says this has never happened to him before. We live in a good neighborhood. Um, people take care of everything and I'm just uh, surprised and that this happens. We want to find out who did this and make them accountable and responsible and they don't do it again. If you have any information, you can call the Warwick Police. In Warwick, I'm Kate Wilkinson, Eyewitness News. So in a large part, it's not only uh, telling the students that are currently here that you know this is a community that's welcoming to them, but also is opening the doors for more students to come to Wheaton uh, from these countries that particularly may feel a level of persecution. Yep. Uh, yeah, we have you know about 15% of our population uh, comes from outside the U.S. and it has been growing. Mm -hmm. I would hate to see that decline because I do think it's an important element. Uh, and it does, I think, send a strong message to the current students who are here from outside the U.S. and hopefully encourages all of us here at Wheaton to be um, welcoming and inclusive in what we do on campus and in how we uh, shape this community with the new people that we add. Yes. Well, I think we should transition over and talk a bit about you personally and uh, some of the things you've been doing here. You've That's been too boring. Let's talk about something. Let's talk about the Patriots. Well, you yeah, know, so. no, great game, wasn't it? Yeah, Did yeah. you watch the end over time? You know, I almost dozed off in the third quarter, but oh, I no. rallied and stayed awake for the whole thing. That's so. when uh, the Patriots were doing the exact same thing. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, so I think the main thing that I, I kind of want to talk about is you've been here for about three years, yes? Yep. Uh, and I think... A lot of times we don't necessarily see what happens uh, when a president has certain initi initiatives, uh, certain ideas about what they want to do. Sometimes we'll see them in small ways, but one large way that we really saw a huge change was uh, this upcoming year when uh, a lot of freshmen, the, the cl freshman class expanded mm -hmm. to about 500 students. Um, I, you know, Ted Meese, uh, an alum professor and reporter for WPRI, uh, he wanted to know, will you know, we be reaching 2,000 plus students soon? Uh, mm -hmm. Is this a goal of yours, ultimately? So, uh, it's a great question, um, and it you know, gets back to financial challenges we face. So, I think also you mentioned the new residence hall. That's in a 10-year plan, I believe, for, yep. for Wheaton. Uh, and that'd be going behind Young is the, is the How do you know that? that? So, <laughs> uh, I, the answer is that's one of the options being considered, yes. but uh, it isn't, uh, you know, it's nowhere near, um, you know, kind of being on the drawing board just yet. We actually have a meeting of our board of trustees next week, mm -hmm. uh, actually, sorry, this week coming up here in a couple of days, and it will be one of the major topics of discussion. I mean, I'm thinking new residence hall in 2019 or so. So obviously it takes a while to plan and build and everything. One of the places that's, you know, been considered is, you know, down in that quad area and create another kind of quad space. But, you know, we have 300 acres of land. There's lots of other places that we can consider. And that'll be, you know, job number one is thinking about where's the best place for it. If you want to see more information, you can pick up a Wheaton Wire copy next Wednesday. And... Thank you very much for watching.
one of those things that like, like I'd always wanted to do and it was always just sort of a far off thing like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll do that eventually. And then it was suddenly, I was actually doing it and I was actually going away. But it was, it was a good feeling. It was like, like, oh, I'm, I'm really doing this. It's closer to living on my own here than it is back in the US. So I'm gonna kind of miss that like feeling of independence, I guess. I'm glad I had the friends from back home that were here. That definitely made it a lot easier. But it was a bit lonely at first, I guess. But then, as I started making friends and stuff, then it became a lot better. So there are about eight of us that came from Wheaton to Sussex. And uh, it was really cool, especially in the beginning, because we were all going through the same things, being in a new culture, not really knowing anyone else. And so we would do things like, we would have dinner together, and we would make sure to do things together, travel together, things like that. So it was really nice having that support system, I guess. Studying abroad was a bit more difficult than I anticipated, but still definitely worth it in the end. Like, you know, a lot of people can go on vacation, but you know, just being somewhere for a week doesn't really like allow you to experience the culture. You get to kind of get a snapshot of it, but not Really, so like getting the chance to actually live in another culture is a, outside of study abroad, that's a pretty rare experience. For the most part, I'm planning on just going on like smaller trips around the local area, just because it's gonna be really nice out hopefully in the coming month. On occasion, I go traveling, like if it's, if it's a nice day or I'll go explore Brighton and things like that. A lot of times like after classes are over and I'm just like, you know, it's late, I'm just chilling in my room, I'll watch TV, I'll go on my computer, Netflix. I guess one way it's changed me is it's allowed me to accept change easier because, you know, while being here I've had to deal with things, whether they're just like like personal things that have happened or just differences in culture and I've had to deal with them. And so I've had to face things changing on my own. And so I think that's helped me overall. I feel like I didn't assimilate so much, you know, like, like small things I, I got kind of used to, but I still feel like I'm not really a part of the culture. I'm still like an outsider looking in. I didn't think that I would be very homesick, but I turned out to be. Like during class, if I was stopped paying attention for a little bit, I would start thinking about like things I would want to do at home. And it would be like things I usually miss, like going sailing with my dad, or it'd be something even simple, like going to Walmart with my mom or anything like that. Just like a normal date with my family. I guess in the US, I never really had to do that much usually if I were like traveling or going somewhere, I'd be with other people. But then I took a six day trip to Paris by myself. Like at first I was nervous that I would get lost or that you know, something bad would happen. But even when like things, like I did get lost or things did go wrong, I was able to handle it on my own. In some ways, I feel like it's not enough. Like I wanna you know, be able to stay and like go every single place that I wanted to go to and everything like that. But in other ways, I feel like, you know, a month it, like, is a good amount, like I'm kind of ready to go home, but also I feel like there's still so much more I could do here. When I look at this, it's interesting because I think my reaction was, was, I think, something that was very similar to many other people's reactions. I don't condone violence and I don't condone Nazis. And so it put me at a, a bit of a conflict when I initially approached this whole question of, is this poster appropriate or is it not? I think ultimately it's talking about, uh, we, what we need to talk about is uh, conversations that we can have that can promote productive conversations and an overall overcome conflicts that we're currently uh, addressing in our, our government system. I think one of the challenges that I personally uh, had with this was that it didn't promote discussion. Um, and I'm not saying that we need to go find a Nazi and go talk to them and have a great productive conversation, but I do think that we need to be uh, as a campus more open to talking, more open to trying to understand different viewpoints, uh, not necessarily viewpoints that promote anti-Semitism, but uh, I think 
there, there definitely needs to be more conversations with different groups on campus than we've had.